Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today you want to revisit Amazon and want to find out what you can use from Amazon tools to grow your business. With me on the show, I have Jenna Lieber. She's the client direct services director at JunkieProductManagement.com, an Amazon agency that provides a variety of services to solve all brands' needs on the Amazon marketplaces. Jenna has been on the show before. In episode 207, we talked about getting started with Amazon. And today, we will discuss how to amplify your growth with Amazon's built-in tools. So let's welcome Jenna to the show. Hi, Jenna. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm very well. Jenna, last time we spoke about how to get started with Amazon, and that's that's difficult enough. But once you're up and running, there is a myriad of different tools within Amazon that you can use to grow your business. And we want to dive a little bit deeper into that. Now, obviously, we don't have the time to talk about all the different areas that you can work on and all the different tools. We want to focus on three or four aspects on it. So let me know what are the main tools that help you within Amazon to grow your business? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes into, into it with the Amazon tools. Now, something I think we spoke about on our last discussion was, you know, in order to be successful, we definitely recommend getting brand registered before you list your products on Amazon. And that definitely ties into the, a lot of the tools that we're going to talk about today. So in terms of getting started, uh, we always want to focus on the listing, right? Because that's your first kind of, you know, look from a, com a customer's perspective, right? So different tools that you can use on Amazon would be implementing a brand story. This is a section that is going to be located above your A plus content where you can tell your brand story pretty straightforward and you're able to provide perspective on why you started the business, what this means to you. If you give to any charities, you can put that in there as well. It's really just an area where you can shed light on who you are as a brand, as opposed to just some products on Amazon. Uh, now, additionally, you can also get a plus content up and running for those of you guys that aren't as familiar with Amazon. This is going to be the section that is below the fold. If you were on desktop, and essentially where, what, what that section is meant for is to provide further clarity on the product. So you can talk about the benefits, you can have images that highlight the key features. It's a really strong place to drive conversions. And you can also kind of do some cross-selling down there with the cross-selling module. Now, um, additionally, this kind of goes hand in hand as well. There is the Amazon storefront, which is not the listing. It's, it's kind of its own little separate page that's yours on Amazon. And it's a great spot where you can, again, showcase all your products together. It's a really great cross-selling opportunity. And it's a great landing spot if you are sending external traffic over to Amazon. And it also ties into PPC as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's a great idea that you can now tell your story um, on Amazon and have just more than a product detail page and really have a, a landing area where people can find more about your brand. Uh, within the tools, and you, you just mentioned external traffic, generic traffic coming to your landing page, to, to this page, there's a, a huge area pay-per-click within Amazon. And I think a lot of people that are already on Amazon, they're logged in in their account, they're browsing, they are in a buyer's mindset. Um, you want to show them the right ads so that they find your page. Tell me a little bit about PPC. How does it work with Amazon? Sure. So PPC it stands for paid per click. And essentially what you're able to do is you're able to run sponsored product ads. These are ads that are set up specifically targeting keywords as well as ASINs. So you can target your competitors this way as well. Uh, you have sponsored brand ads, which is also a way to target keywords. Sponsored brand ads have a little bit more flexibility and they are able to do headline ads, which are those ads that you see at the top of the search results on Amazon. And then you also have video ads as well. And video ads are great. They're about their they, they did start putting them at the top of the headline, which is good, but then they also could be in the middle of the search results as well. We love video ads. They do really, really well and uh, just a really great opportunity. 
Now, additionally, there's also sponsored display ads uh, where you can display ads on uh, different listings throughout Amazon, basically your competitors and stealing traffic from them. Now, one thing that is not available on Amazon Seller Central, but is something that our team has access to is Amazon DSP. DSP stands for Demand Side Platform. And through that, our team is able to retarget customers that have not purchased. We're able to cross-sell to customers who have purchased from you in the past, but maybe they haven't come back. So we try to drive them back. And then you can also target competitors there as well. Now, um, the Amazon advertising in general is really, really um, improving. And it's it's always, you know, adding new features and things like that. Like for those of you that, you know, might not have, you know, video capabilities, there's now some options in Amazon to build your own video within there um, using AI. So Amazon does have AI involved now with PPC, which is awesome um, and really opens up some doors, I think, to people that, you know, might not have that content yet because it does take some time to generate that. Um, but yeah, PP PPC in general is really on the rise. And then tying in the external stuff, Amazon does have a way for you to track your, uh, basically you can create an attribution link that's located in the campaign manager uh, dashboard where you can create links and you can get put those in your email blast, your social media, whatever makes sense for you. And you can track the sales, you can track uh, how many people opened the link. So really great insight as well, kind of tying in that external piece into Amazon advertising. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty much like what we know from Meta or from Google. So it seems that the advertising platform is really growing, evolving, adding more features. From your perspective, what's the learning curve to get really a grip on the advertising platform with Amazon? Man, that's tough to say. You know, I would say that the Amazon PPC platform, it's a challenge. And, and it's one of those things where even like Q1 is so different from Q3 or 4, right? Because for a lot of businesses, like Q1 is kind of a slower time. You're coming off the holidays. You know, it's really just the health space that's really on fire during Q1. So even that in general is you have to be able to adjust your strategy quarter to quarter when it makes sense and make sure that the advertising is set up to be successful given what's going on in the world and on Amazon in general, right? So, um, you know, I wouldn't put a time frame on it because there are people like, for example, that maybe Amazon is their full-time job, right? They're able to dedicate a lot of hours to it. But for those that, you know, maybe they're just getting started, maybe this is kind of a side gig, it's going to take some time because just even getting in the platform, taking the time to go through, gather that data, make decisions, it's definitely really time consuming. So it is something that does take a lot of work to become an expert at. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the product detail page, to the listings page. Um, that's a science in itself to get that right. What's the latest tools and um, apps that help you with getting that right? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, um, obviously, when um, when you're talking about the listing, you know, you get involved with A plus content brand story. That's definitely important as well. But the listing, the way we should think about that is it's it's never perfect. It's never complete. And it's super important that, again, we're using Amazon tools to refine that and make sure that we're driving the right sales. So to do that, what you can do is you can use Amazon's A-B experiments, where basically Amazon will take your current title, and then you can give Amazon a second title. And what they're going to do is they're going to show half of your audience one title, and then the other half the other title. And they'll let you know which title converted the most sales and got the most traction. So that's one tool that comes to mind in terms of refining that uh, that listing and making sure it's driving conversions. Now, additionally, this isn't necessarily a situation where it's directly involved with your listing, but I will say Amazon has really improved their tools in brand analytics specifically. So um, for those of you that have like a product that is repurchased and it's something that commonly will be bought more than once. Amazon has really refined that data 
And it's something that you are able to tap into through brand analytics. So based on what you're seeing, if you're seeing that people, maybe your uh, repeat purchase rate is down, you're not seeing a lot of traction there, that could be a sign, hey, let's look at that listing. Let's look at our conversion rate. Uh, what do we have to do to try to get people to come back? Are there adjustments we can make to the listing to make that happen? So those are some tools that come to mind in terms of refining um, that listing copy. Mm -hmm. I read a lot about Amazon and AI lately. I think there's huge changes. Amazon is facilitating AI as everyone else does. What kind of tools do you see already in Amazon that are sort of AI driven? So right now, the most I would say with AI specifically is going to be in the PPC platform. Um, that's definitely something big that's happening. And again, and that opens up a lot of opportunities for people. You know, I, we have a lot of brands that come to us that honestly, they've, they've got a strong business. They've, they've got a lot of sales, but they do lack that content. That is a big issue just because it takes a lot of time to create it. So AI, I feel like is opening up the doors specifically for that. Now, in terms of other tools you can be using, AI is just a great opportunity even outside of Amazon. If you're looking at chat GPT or Claude or, or uh, what's Google's new one? Is it Genesis? Gem maybe? Gemini. 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 Close. I was close. <laughs> I, know. I was like, I know they just changed the name like very recent. Um, so anyway. Um, you can use whatever AI platform you are comfortable with, but you could do competitor analysis through that. You can do keyword research through that, and you can even get a jump start on writing your sales copy. Now, one thing I will stress, because our team has definitely been tapping into AI a lot lately, just trying to learn how we can effectively use it. Um, but you also don't want to rely solely on it, right? Um, I've seen a lot of brands that are using it and it just lacks that human touch is what I would say. So you want to make sure you're still tapping into that. And then also I would argue, especially when we're talking about listing copy, there are times when maybe AI will uh, expand on the truth a little bit, or maybe they'll tell a little bit more of a story. So we just want to be careful and make sure that everything is accurate, uh, that is being written by AI. And then additionally, especially with Amazon, you know, AI doesn't know that Amazon has certain rules on what you can and can't say on a listing, right? So we wanna make sure that there is that human QA and adjusting it to make sure it sounds like you, it's, it's Amazon safe and all of that stuff. Uh, but absolutely, there's so much opportunity out there to be able uh, to make a big difference in your business. Mm -hmm. No, you are turnkey product management. You're helping your clients with everything Amazon. Tell me a little bit about your approach and what kind is or how looks the, the sales funnel from your side to get traffic outside, inside Amazon to the listing page. Absolutely. So, so like you said, we do, um, you know, help from, you know, kind of the jump with our clients. So um, obviously we've talked about the listing, we've talked about PPC. Um, so there are other aspects as well that are super important to be driving that traffic to the listing, right? Uh, obviously PPC is a massive player in driving uh, obviously views to your listing, but there are other things at play. So the first thing that comes to mind is obviously you need reviews. Like in order to be successful, in order for people to choose, even in an ad, right? Like a lot of the times our team won't run ads to a listing until they have at least like five reviews, just because all of us shopping on Amazon, we're social proof driven, right? So if there's no social proof on that listing, then why would someone pick your listing over the next one, right? So reviews are a big thing. So there's obviously a lot of review strategies, but if you're using what Amazon is giving you just to get started, Amazon Vine is a really great program. Uh, the way this works is it's currently as of March, 2024, it is a tiered structure. I say March, 2024, because they have been playing around with the price recently. So I just want to make sure I'm setting the expectations with you all. So um, if you use Amazon Vine to get one to two reviews, it is going to be $0 um, to uh, get those reviews. And the way that works is Amazon will get their Vine voices involved, which 
is essentially their reviewers. Amazon has their own reviewers that will basically get the product for free through Amazon Buy. And then once they get the product, they'll try it out and then they'll leave a review on your listing. So um, again, that's zero dollars to one to two reviews. And then the second bucket is, I believe, from three to 10 is $75. So again, if you want to get three to 10 reviews, you can do 75. And then 10 to 30, or sorry, 11 to 30 is $200. So Amazon Vine, essentially, like I said, they'll send that product out to approved Vine voices. And from there, those people were, will review your product. Now, in my personal opinion, I say go all in. Don't do the three reviews or whatever. Go for the 30 because reviews are probably the hardest part, I would say, about Amazon because there's so many rules associated with it, right? There's so many, um, you know, blocks for getting it. So I highly recommend for those that are getting on the platform, they're launching a new product, get Amazon Find going. And then additionally, Again, using Amazon's tools, you want to get request a review involved, where basically you're able to request a review from a customer that has purchased your product between five to 30 days after purchase. So those are some tools that come to mind specifically with reviews. Now, obviously reviews are a big thing that's gonna drive people to the listing, um, but then also how else do we get eyes on that listing despite are in not only using PPC, but other ways, right? So some other tools that come to mind is Amazon posts. This is going to be associated specifically with your Amazon storefront. And it's basically your own little Instagram on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And what's great about that is it's not only on your storefront, it's going to be on your listing, this content that you're putting out. And then it's also going to be on your competitors listings as well. Now, the content you're able to submit is you generally cannot submit infographics, although I will say the bigger brands, I do see them get away with that a little bit more than the smaller brands, but that's not my business, whatever. Um, but generally, it's lifestyle images. So people using your product is a really great example. Um, and then Amazon actually just recently, probably within the last month or so, allowed you to start doing video on Amazon posts as well. And they look super, super good. So essentially what Amazon posts is, is it's again, it's Amazon's little social media, but then it's a free way to get views on your listing. You, this doesn't cost any money, um, but keep in mind, you don't have control over what competitor listing you show up on. It's going to be based on Amazon's algorithms. Um, so they will place you as they see fit. Um, but again, it's completely free. And it's a way to reach new audiences. Um, and then additionally, one other that comes to mind, again, just driving traffic to the listing would be a program called Creator Connections. And this is going to be located under the advertising tab for those of you guys that have Amazon already set up. And um, the way this works is you're basically able to put together a job posting for creators where they can either buy their product or you can send them a product and they will create content for it. So like, for example, a lot of my brands, especially during the holidays, they had uh, creators creating like Pinterest, like gift guides type of thing and involving them there. Um, people can make YouTube videos about your product. They can post on Instagram, Facebook. It, it really doesn't matter. But essentially what's great about these creators is you are not paying for those creators unless they make a sale. And it's based off the commission structure that you set up. So I believe the minimum is 5% um, mm. per sale, but you can go as high as you want, I think up to 80%. So uh, again, it's really great because it's not an additional charge. The creators come to you. Uh, so it does kind of allow you to start to get involved with creators and influencers and things like that. Whoa, that's a lot. I learned a lot. So <laughs> apparently there is a lot of content marketing, user generated content, influencer marketing now part of Amazon within the platform itself. Now, my question is, how can I um, repurpose content that I already have on other platforms? Is there a certain format that I only can use on Amazon or can I just use something that I have on social media or content snippets that I have already and just recycle them in Amazon? 
I, I mean, I, I think everyone should be recycling, honestly, it's because it's just so much work to get content created. So it's not necessarily a format issue. It's more what's involved with that content. So like on your website, for example, you can put you know, turnkeyproductmanagement.com or something like that in the bottom corner, right? Um, like that's that's an option. Um, but with Amazon, you can't do that. You can't put your Instagram on there. You, 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 got, you got to just make sure it's safe from that perspective. And then additionally, you know, um, on Amazon, for example, um, you can't just say your product is BPA free. If you say that, Amazon's going to say, okay, prove it. And then it could cause your listing to go down and things like that. So you just want to be um, careful with trigger words like that, where maybe on your website, you can confidently say BPA free because your product probably is BPA free, but Amazon, because they have to protect themselves, they're not going to just let you say that whenever you want. So you want to make sure any of your content, whether that's going on Amazon posts, creator connections, um, or not creator connection, sorry, um, on your listing, on your storefront, you just want to make sure it's free from that. But other than that, you should be reusing your content, whether that's in Amazon posts, on the store, on the listing, anywhere that it makes sense um, is obviously a really great idea. Just make sure you're using it. Mm -hmm. One thing that puzzles me is that you show up on your competitors. So why is versa probably your competitors will also show up on your channels. So how often do I need to post new content to basically prevent that or just take over their page? So with that specifically, uh, there's kind of two, two things that are happening there. So obviously Amazon post is what I was talking about when it's, when we're talking about showing up on competitors listings. My recommendation for the frequency on competitors or uh, Amazon posts is posting at least twice per week. Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, you do not have control over, obviously, um, which competitor it shows up on. But as long as you are frequently participating, you should put yourself in a good spot there. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is obviously through ads, we can show up on competitors' listings. So what that just means is you need to make sure that those ads are set up that you're watching your listing to see who is trying to take space from you um i know that there are times because certain brands it, it happens to a little bit more right so what you can sometimes do and and again it's this could be something to test but you don't have to rely on it per se is you could cross sell so Instead of uh, like, let's say you have two products and maybe they go well together, you can set up a sponsored display ad to show on your listing with that second product. So that way a competitor can't take that spot because you're buying that spot for yourself. So that's another method that you could do is if you're seeing that um, specifically that sponsored spot on your listing is being taken by a competitor, you can try to buy that spot up by showcasing your other products. That makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now, Amazon Prime Day is coming up at some point and a lot of brands already getting ready with discount and coupons. Um, tell me a little bit, how does that work with Amazon? Sure. So uh, I just got alerted actually to Amazon. Again, this is like mid, we're talking end of March right now. I just got alerted actually yesterday with what they know so far. So there is no date or anything yet. Um, generally, we don't get that date until two weeks prior that's just generally when we'll get it uh historically prime day has been in july so we anticipate it's probably in july but we are not 100 percent certain so april is the best month in my opinion to start prepping for this so one thing that i've already done for my brands is i've booked specifically their lightning deals and best deals so what this is is basically if you guys again are listening to this you would go to your advertising and go to deals. And then um, in there, when you press create a deal, if Amazon puts Prime Day as the date, uh, I just recommend booking those. Uh, you're not going to pay for anything until it goes live. So there's no harm in just booking them and seeing what happens. Now, specifically with lightning deals and best deals, lightning deals are uh, 12, a 12 hour window. And then best deals are a seven day window. So I believe they're saying that a best deal is going to cost a thousand dollars. 
And then um, a lightning deal more than likely will be 300 for this specific slot. Now, the best deal I'm not that worried about. That's going to run the entire week of Prime Day. So it's still a relevant option. But lightning deals, my concern with those and something that I think is important for everyone to be picky about is lightning deals are just a 12 hour window. So if Amazon gives you like, in my opinion, honestly, a lightning deal should not be something you move forward with unless it's the first day of prime day. Now there's definitely high traffic on both prime days because it's usually two days. It's a 48 hour window, but Honestly, if it's not that specific first day of Prime Day, I just generally see it doesn't do that well. So if you end up getting the second day or even a couple days after Prime Day, I recommend canceling it because it's not worth your time and money. Now, another thing to look out for is do you have a bad time window? So for example, if Amazon gives you 1 a.m. to 1 p.m., um, this is based off Pacific Standard Time. So that's something to keep in mind is no matter what in the U.S., it's going to be PST. So 1 a.m. PST, that's 4 a.m. EST, realistically, how many people are shopping during that time, right? So I recommend, honestly, if it doesn't start at like at the earliest 5 a.m. Pacific time um, to 5 p.m. Pacific time, I would say move on because those hours, it just doesn't make sense. Because again, when you participate in a lightning deal, you're taking other promotions off the table, like prime exclusive mm -hmm. discount and coupons. So that's what we know right now. Um, I believe it said April 17th, we will have more information on how to schedule specifically prime exclusive discounts and coupon clippings. Now, Amazon did just make an adjustment. I believe it was the last day of February. They changed how coupons work. So it used to be a coupon clipping. You can run a 10% off coupon clipping, cancel that. And then like the next day you could set up a 5% coupon clipping. Those days are no longer. The way it works is basically you have to beat your lowest price in the last 90 days. So what I would say is if we're anticipating a July uh, prime, prime day, I would say that 30 or 90 days before that, so that would be what? Probably mid-April, I guess. Yeah. 90 days, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, three months, you know. So uh, I would say it's important to take a look at specifically your coupons and your prime exclusive discounts, um, taking a look at those and shutting them down. Because what what's going to happen is you're going to have to beat that sales price on Prime Day. So you want to set yourself up for success. So promotion should start to kind of calm down a little bit just to make room for Prime Day. Now, speaking historically, whenever you're participating in Prime Day, whether it's through a lightning deal, a prime exclusive discount or a coupon, Amazon is going to make you do 20% off. So that's, I would mentally get prepared for that number. It can obviously change, you know, every year Amazon could be making adjustments, but at least the last like five years or so, it's always been 20%. So that's what I would be prepared to do is give at a minimum 20% off. Whoa, that was a masterclass on how to set up Prime Day. Now my head is spinning <laughs> and I need help. Um, turnkey production management, you're helping sellers with getting ready and having the maintenance and basically do all of that hands-free. Give me an overview of what you offer and how you help your clients. Absolutely. So we basically offer three main services. We have full service where that's what we do everything for you. We set up the listings. We're going to set up a PPC for you. We're going to come up with the marketing strategies, the growth strategies, the review strategies, and we'll be implementing those on your behalf. So that's full service. And in terms of the pricing for that, um, all of the pricing for all services is based off of the number of uh, ASINs and SKUs that you have. So that is all custom based off that. Now, we also offer PPC and DSP ad management only, where we're able to run your PPC advertising and DSP all for you for the products of your choosing. Now, additionally, what comes with PPC and DSP is you get quarterly coaching where you will meet once a quarter with a client manager who will coach you on the other aspects of the business. So that's review generation, growth strategies, all of that good stuff. 
you will have somebody there to help you in that area. So that's PPC only. And then we do also offer coaching. And essentially what coaching is, is you have a monthly call with your coach where they will meet with you and they will strategize with you on review strategies, conversion strategies, different marketing tactics. We'll talk about prime day. We'll talk about quarter four, whatever's up and coming. And uh, basically it's a, a good option for those that are newer to Amazon and they want to run it themselves. But it's also a really great option for those that maybe already have a team, but maybe they don't know about Amazon or, you know, there's still some work to be done there. So um, that's kind of who's a good fit for coaching specifically. But those are the three main services. And specifically with PPC, you are able to also add on monthly coaching. So those two can kind of be intertwined if you choose. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely necessary to have somebody who has all the background, all the experience with Amazon to have either internally or externally like you guys on, on the team. So who's your perfect customer? What kind of brands do you work with? You know, I would say everybody. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to work with everybody. We don't have specific products or anything in mind. We, we do different types of products. So like we've got our supplement brands that we work with, but we also have our work with a big brand in the CrossFit space and in the pet space. So really we can make it work with any type of product. Our team has tons and tons of experience in different categories which is also a pretty big advantage, especially supplements. If you, if you are not familiar with the ins and outs of the rules with supplements, mm -hmm. you can be dealing with a lot of drama. So, um, you know, our team in terms of products has a lot of different experiences and tons of different categories and niches and things like that. So it's a really great process that way. And then in terms of client size, like what you're selling per month, uh, it definitely varies. You know, uh, we have clients that are hitting a million dollars per month on Amazon, but we also have, you know, some smaller fish as well that are just getting started. Maybe they're just launching. So they have no sales history. So it really kind of just depends on, uh, you know, what you guys have externally, what the game plan is. And that's something that our client success team can work with you on is deciding what type of service makes sense based off of your availability, your brand size, all of that good stuff. So, I guess to answer your question is everyone is a good fit, I would say, for turnkey. It just depends on the type of service and, and also how involved uh, the brand wants to be. Everyone is very different, I would say, in that in that way. Mm -hmm. No, excellent. You told me in our little pre-chat before that you have some special offer for all listeners. I do, yes. So for all those that are listening in here, uh, you can go to turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash coffee. And we basically have a free giveaway set up for everybody. So that will include a free Amazon competitor revenue um, assessment. The first 25 people that sign up will also get a free Amazon listing audit plus three months of our group coaching, which is called Roundtable. Um, also get to choose one free Amazon accelerator course access. So these are just our courses that our team has built over time, uh, to help you with your Amazon journey. Uh, you can also request your customized Amazon growth guarantee. And then, uh, for brands spending $10,000 a month on ads or more, you get a free Amazon PPC ad audit plus a free Amazon $50, uh, $500 Amazon DSP ad spend test budget. So there's a few things that you guys can go ahead and check out there. And again, that's at turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash coffee. Uh, if you guys would like to take advantage of that opportunity. I would highly recommend that. I would put the link in the show notes. Then you're just one click away. Jenna, before our coffee break comes to an end, what is one final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Uh, you know, I just, I, I appreciate everybody's time today. And for those of you guys that made it through the entire thing, I, I would say that, uh, you know, when it comes to Amazon in general, use what Amazon is giving you. I, I find so many brands that I'm auditing their accounts and I'm like, man, they're not using lightning deals. They're, they're not using prime exclusive discounts or they haven't set up their Amazon A plus content. So I highly recommend using what Amazon gives you. It, it you know, it can always feel daunting, like, like it's going to take a lot of time, but ultimately, you know, it's going to help you grow on the platform if you get involved and use those tools that Amazon has um, at your disposal. 
Yeah, I learned a lot. Amazon is a universe that I'm not aware of or that I'm not in right now because I'm on the Shopify side of things and it's growing there. And I think if you want to grow your business, you have to be omni-channel. Amazon is the biggest player in, in the point there. And having someone external on your side helping you there is definitely the way to go. Jenna, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.